Good evening, uh, students, um, parents. Um, I'm excited to welcome you all uh, to the Goldman High uh, Subject Selection Evening. Um, this is a great um, milestone for you, um, and congratulations. And as a school, we want to make sure that we do everything possible to support you in your future aspirations um, of, of what sort of subjects you want to do that aligns with your um, you know, career um, opportunities. Um, over the past few weeks, you would have uh, gone through um, subject information with the, um, uh, with the teachers, um, I'm, I'm confident most of you uh, would have had opportunity to uh, be part of the interview process with the careers advisor and the deputy principal and I hope all those different interactions have given you sufficient information to make um, you know the right choices, subject choices. This evening is a great opportunity for you to have uh, asked targeted questions to the, to the teachers and we also have uh, you know, uh, different institutions, uh, universities and TAFE over here to actually answer some of those questions for you. Students and parents, I just want you to be confident that we as a school, we are a student-centered school. We just want to make sure that we do the best thing for you, uh, for your child, to ensure that they actually uh, succeed um, in achieving all their uh, future goals and aspirations at Goldman High School. I wish you all um, the very best in the subject selection and if there is any uh, way we can help you, please do not hesitate to contact me and I'll do the best I can to make sure that you get the best uh, you know, education at Goulburn High School. Thank you very much. Enjoy your evening. Welcome to the Goulburn High School Stage 6 Subject Selection Presentation. The purpose of this presentation has been developed to assist students and families to provide relevant ANESA information to Year 10 students and their parents and This next section is around course selection considerations. On this slide are the points that students and families should consider when a student is choosing a course. The ability of a student, the interest and their motivation but their career aspirations, but also what they might need for their career. The syllabus requirements, which include practical and major work components, the combination of all the different subjects that they choose, but also other commitments that may be in school or outside of school can play an important uh, factor in what students may do, which will lead to success. Students should uh, take these uh, dot points on the slide into consideration and choose carefully and have these factors in mind when they're choosing subjects. NESA has a great website which details all the information that a student may need when considering subject selection. On this slide, uh, you can see that on this website where we are at NESA, in the section which is specifically for year 11 and 12, they have guidance or advice for students choosing HSC. On this page, you can review the information that NESA re recommends, which aligns to the things that were mentioned in the previous slide regarding the considerations for choosing a subject selection. On this slide, this is um, another page from the NESA website detailing some of the useful resources that students may obtain, uh, which are relevant to exams, but in particular, the preparation uh, for HSC exams and also in the completion of the HSC courses. You can see there are highlighted links which actually point students uh, on that website to specific content and resources that be available to them. Beyond the dot points that were uh, spoken to earlier in this section, it is really important that Year 11 and 12 students pick subjects based on um, their potential career, but then also they pick subjects where they can actually see a connection between the subjects that they will be doing in year 11 and 12, and then also life after school. The NESA website also uh, details the connection between courses and also to training pathways and the industries that students may be going to. To attain this information, students may go to the NESA website, go to the relevant syllabus, and in each of the stage six course descriptions, 
there are the possible study, work and training pathways relevant to each subject detailed in those syllabus documents. A change has occurred as a result of the Minister of Education in 2022 announced HSC reforms. Part of the HSC reforms, in summary, means that there is no longer Category A or Category B subjects. There are, uh, what this means is that there are a larger amount of subjects available students where they can complete a course which contributes to the calculation of an ATAR. Due to the large amount of students that were doing VET subjects and uh, uh, the, the reform now acknowledges that VET subjects contribute, can contribute to the calculation of an ATAR. This means that year 10 students from 2023 going into year 11 and 2024 can benefit from completing VET subjects and other subjects now which then contribute to the calculation of an ATAR. If students wish to undertake an ATAR pathway, the school offers a range of these different uh, ATAR subjects. And the ATAR subject means that they should be sitting a formal HSC examination. When you choose from a broad range of these different subjects, it allows the student to further the education, training or work. The next section is around the record of student achievement, commonly known as the ROSA. The ROSA is a credential that's available to all students. It is following the completion of year 10. It allows those who leave school prior to the completion of the HSC to have a credential. And you are only eligible for a HSC if you've successfully completed the ROSA. If students decide to leave school prior to the HSC, they should actually have a conversation with the Year Advisor and Careers Advisor to have this discussion, decide if this is the right choice for them. There is a formal sign out process and students and families will need to get, be in contact with the school and the school will be in contact with, uh, schools, uh, with NESA and make the necessary arrangements on schools online to ensure that they can download an e-record for students in the interim for the ROSA while it's awaiting um, confirmation by NESA. The higher school certificate. The high school certificate is commonly known as the HSC. This is a credential. It is the accumulation of a student's school career. It is the highest education award that can be achieved at a secondary school in New South Wales. It reports a student achievement in terms of standards achieved in individual courses. It presents a profile of student achievement across a broad range of subjects. The HSC course structure is made up of the following points. All courses in the HSC have a unit value. Most courses are two units, which equate to 120 hours of study and a HSC result of out of 100. Some courses are one unit. This is the equivalent of 60 hours of study and a HSC result out of 50. Many one unit courses are extension courses, enabling three or four units of courses to be below the requirements for the HSC. In year 11, students must complete a minimum of 12 units. Students must satisfactorily complete the year 11 course before commencing their corresponding year 12 course. In year 12, there's a minimum of 10 units to be studied. Both the year 11 and year 12 pattern of study must include two units of English, at least six units of board developed courses, at least three courses of two units value or greater, at least four subjects, this includes English, a maximum of six units of science may be included in the year 11 pattern of study, a maximum of seven units of science may be included in the year 12 pattern of study. Another requirement for the HSC, the HSC credential, is that students meet the minimum standard in literacy and numeracy. To be eligible for the HSC, students must demonstrate that minimum standard in literacy and English. 
students will not will show they meet the HSC minimum standards by passing online tests of basic literacy and numeracy skills, which are available for them to sit when they're ready in year 10, 11 and 12, and even after the HSC. The HSC minimum standards means that students need to complete these online tests. These online tests are offered four times per year for students to sit each of the minimum standard testing. The minimum standards testing include reading, 45 multiple choice computer adaptive questions, numeracy, 45 multiple choice computer adaptive questions, and writing, one question based on a visual or text prompt. For more information about the test and the resources that are available to parents, students and schools, please visit the NESA website. Types of HSC courses. So, as mentioned before, there is board developed courses and board endorsed courses. The board developed courses are those subjects which contribute to the calculation of an ATAR. They include VET subjects and they also include life skill courses. The board developed courses, however, are those courses that do not have a formal HSC exam. They do not in, uh, they are not included in terms of the calculation of an ATAR. Board developed courses, some of which are VET courses, but for more specific information on which are board developed courses and board uh, endorsed courses, please visit the uh, NESA website. The following are the points that students must do to be considered satisfactorily completing a course. For a student, to actually complete a course, students must follow the course developed or endorsed by NESA. They must apply themselves with diligence and sustained effort to the set tasks and experiences providing the course by the school and achieve some or all of the course outcomes. VET board developed courses require students to complete mandatory work placement as well. Some of the additional uh, requirements for students to complete a HSC course includes that students must complete HSC assessment tasks that contribute in excess of 50% of available marks in course where internal assessment marks are submitted and they sit and make a serious attempt at any requisite high school certificate examination for a course. Confirmation of entry. Students will receive a NESA confirmation of entry from the school. Before signing the confirmation of entry each year, in year 10, year 11 and 12, students must check if they're enrolled in the correct course and that if they're eligible for year 10 record of school achievement, year 11, stage six preliminary, year 12, HSC, and where applicable, the ATAR. Another part, another um, component that is mandatory for students is the HSC All My Own Work course. This is a mandatory program designed to help HSC students to follow the principles and practices of good scholarship. In the HSC All My Own Work course, students will learn about the scholarship principles and practices, acknowledging sources, plagiarism, copyright and working with others. In the following slides, there will be features of each of the different courses in the various KLAs offered at Goulburn High School. English, Year 11. On the slide are the different courses that are available to students. English Advance, English Extension 1. This extension course must be studied with English Advance. English Standard, English EALD, and English studies. In year 12, students can select from, can complete the following courses, English Advance, English Extension 1, and English Extension 2. You can see on the screen what must be studied with each of the extension courses. English Standard, English EALD, and English studies are also courses to be completed in year 12. Creative Arts in Year 11 and 12. 
the following are subjects that can be completed in creative arts. Dance, drama, music one, music two, and visual arts. Students who choose and would like to do a music extension must study music two in year 11 and continue the study of music two throughout year 12. On the screen are the subjects offered in HISI, Human Society and its Environment in Year 11 and 12, Aboriginal Studies, Ancient History, Business Studies, Economics, Geography, Legal Studies, Modern History, Society and Culture, Studies of Religion 1 and 2, Work Studies. History Extension is only offered in Year 12. Students must study Ancient History or Modern History in Year 11 and continue to study at least one of these throughout Year 12 to be able to do History Extension. Languages and Year 11 in Year 11 and Year 12. Learning languages opens minds to difference where diversity is seen as a regular part of society. Proficiency in languages provides a national resource and encourages more effective engagement with the global community. Students need to meet specific eligibility criteria for Stage 6 language courses. For each of these courses, students must apply for eligibility determination by completing the relevant application. Mathematics Year 11. The courses uh, listed on the slide are the ones that are available. Mathematics Advanced, Mathematics Extension 1, Mathematics Standard and Numeracy. Year 12, Mathematics includes Mathematics Advanced, Mathematics Extension 1, Mathematics Extension 2, and Mathematics Standard 2, and Mathematics Standard 1, and Numeracy. Please note with the extension courses in Mathematics, Mathematics Advanced is required to be studied with Mathematics Extension 1 and 2. In PDHP, the courses that are available from this uh, faculty is Community and Family Studies, PDHP, Exploring Early Childhood, and Sport, Lifestyle, and Recreation. The courses that are available in Science to Study include Biology, Chemistry, Earth Environmental Science, Investigating Science, and Physics. In the Technology Implied Studies uh, faculty, the following subjects are offered. Agriculture, Design and Technology, Engineering Studies, Enterprise Computering, Food Technology, Industrial Technology, Software Engineering, and Textiles and Design. The following are the extension courses that can be studied by Year 12 students, and there are specific requirements from each of the faculties for these courses. In Year 12, the extension courses available include History Extension, Music Extension, Science Extension, and there are other extension courses for Languages and VET courses. Life skill courses are the Year 11 are uh, in Year 11 and 12, and they provide options for students with disability who cannot access the regular course outcomes, particularly students with an intellectual disability. The life skill courses have been developed um, are in the board developed courses, and they contribute to the attainment of HSC, and do they and they do not have HSC examinations, and so they do not contribute to the calculation of an ATAR. VET courses, so vocational education and training in the HSC. These are packaged and endorsed courses that help qualify for a HSC unit credit. This means that these VET courses are courses that can, can be contributed to the calculation of a HSC. Board developed VET courses include stage six industry curriculum frameworks and board endorse VET courses are stage six in year 11 and 12, and they're available to all students, school-based trainees and school-based apprentices. In terms of the industry curriculum framework, these are courses that actually support those who are uh, completing VET courses developed by NESA. They're based on nationally endorsed training packages which means that the courses have a list of qualifications and unit competencies which contribute to the attainment of the HSC. And they are described in each of the course syllabus, which then contribute to the units of competencies. These are included in the HSC outcomes and content. And they have the option to complete a HSC examination, which then allow for that subject to be included for the 
calculation of an ATAR. These subjects require the mandatory work placement. On the screen are VET board developed courses. This means these are the VET courses that are available to be studied but are uh, calculated by uh, UAC for an ATAR. Automotive, business services, uh, construction, electrotechnology, entertainment industry, financial services, hospitality, human services, information and digital technology, primary industries, retail services, tourism, travel and events. On the screen is a transcript and a certificate from VET. So these are VET credentials, meaning that if the students completed study of a VET course, this is what they would attain. So on the far left hand side is the certificate and then in the middle there, is a sample of the units of competencies that the students have successfully completed and then on the right hand side it's a statement of attainment if the student has not completed the whole course and just lists the units of competency they have completed. HSC credentials. On the screen is the record of student achievement. For a student to get a HSC, students will need to complete the ROSA. That is a requirement. And you can see on the screen are the de details that will be recorded for students who are completing um, a HSC. On the far left hand side is the transcript of the HSC courses a student has studied and successfully completed for the HSC. In the middle is the document detailing the results of the preliminary course a student has successfully completed. And then on the right hand side are the details of the courses that have been satisfactorily completed uh, at the end of stage five, which is the end of year 10. On the screen is the HSC Testima. This is the certificate that would be awarded to the student who has completed the higher school certificate. On the screen is the HSC record of achievement. On each of these pages is the document detailing what has been satisfactorily completed and it is a record of the achievement for the student. On the far left hand side, it is the details of the courses the students have completed showing their results in terms of the examination mark, the assessment mark that's attained internally and the HSC mark that they uh, attained through the exam and then overall the performance band. In the middle is the results the students have the student has achieved or attained as a result of their uh, course completion and on the far right hand side are the results that the student obtained as a result of completing the course in year 10. On the screen is a sample of a course report for a student for business studies. This will be given at the end of the completion of the, H of the HSC course and when the results in the exam have been sat. You can see on the screen that there is a figure there saying HSC mark of 78. This explains to an individual who's reading this report where that student has performed in the HSC exam but then also against the course performance descriptors what that actually means and then gives you a summary of the candidates, uh, candidates that completed the course as well. This is the HSC record of achievement for life skills. So this means that this is uh, showing to the reader the students that have completed and attained the results in life skills courses. On the far right hand side are the individual life skills outcomes that the student has demonstrated in terms of competency. HSC results. The HSC is calculated based on what is provided on the screen. So students complete their internal assessments that are issued by the school. When that is completed, a total of 50% is then calculated and submitted to NESA. Students need to complete the HSC exam and that HSC exam is calculated uh, 
out of 50 and the total percentage of HSC exam and the internal assessment mark will be combined to give the HSC result for that individual course for that student. So this is the HSC reported mark that is in the HSC course report for the individual student. The video uh, that is on the, on the screen can be viewed on the NESA website. This is an excellent video explaining in detail how the HSC mark is calculated. The ATAR, the Australian Tertiary Emission Rank. The ATAR is for students wishing to gain a place at a university. Please note, it is not a mark, it is a rank. It provides information about how a student performs overall in relations to other students. It is calculated by the University Admissions Centre. Other considerations. Other considerations are listed on the slide below. It is important uh, for subject selection that students think about the two questions. What do I want for my future? And what pathway best suits me? The different subjects that are on offer do not, are not are suitable for everybody, but it, the student and the families need to consider what, this, what will be best for the student so that they can perform their best in year 11 and 12. Some of the people listed below are the ones in which the student should attain some advice. The teachers, their parents, their year advisor and their career advisor. If you would like some more information, around subject selection and the details around the HSC credentials and the ATAR, please go to the, the websites below.